Hello, Raphael. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, today, we're going to talk about critical thinking and the importance of critical thinking as a leader. But before going into that topic, I would love for you to introduce yourself and also maybe shortly say what platformation is or stands for. All right. Thank you, Annalise, first of all, to, for having me in your home. Uh, uh, thank you for, for being here. Um, maybe a quick introduction of myself. Uh, my name is Rafael. I am uh, originally from uh, Brazil. Uh, that's, uh, uh, I moved to Europe around 2009, 2010. And I have been working in consulting uh, actually since my early days in my career. Uh, and then in 2016, I started up Platformation, mm -hmm. uh, my organization in, in Belgium uh, in, in Luxembourg. Uh, Platformation is a consulting organization focused in the implementation of ServiceNow services, uh, everything around the ServiceNow platform. And today we are a market leading consulting organization within that segment. Uh, within Platformation, my responsibilities are actually to run the delivery organization. So I'm responsible for our clients, for projects, uh, but also for our team uh, uh, and, and to make sure that actually we are uh, enabled and able to deliver all the projects uh, for our clients. Mm. That's it in a nutshell. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, Rafael, if you think about the topic of critical thinking and critical thinking as a leader, um, I read on your website as well that you're doing a lot of, of around flow mm -hmm. and the flow experience. Um, and I was wondering how you see that in relationship to critical thinking. Yeah, I think maybe a good analogy to, to think about critical thinking is to look a little bit back at how I started as a consultant. Okay. I used to be a very technical consultant uh, Many years ago, so my focus was really technology, and uh, I think at a certain point I started thinking with myself if, if this was actually bringing the values or the value that our clients were really expecting. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I actually had to go a little bit beyond and started being more involved into functional elements, so really how to enable uh, uh, the platform that we work with actually bringing the most value to clients. So I think that was a natural process of thinking and realizing okay, I actually have to evolve into a different direction. Um, and uh, it still keeps on happening today, right? So I think uh, the world evolves really fast. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important that we stay on top of what we are doing and we are constantly in, in, in internally thinking about, is this the right way to continue? Do we have to change? Do we have to adapt? Uh, and I think 2020 especially was a quite special year on that sense. I think everybody was challenged with a lot of things. So um, at a certain point, I also had to think a lot about uh, what are we doing? Yeah? Is this the correct way of actually pushing through uh, this crisis, this uh, health crisis, but also the uh, situation that the business are in? Yeah? Because that's, uh, I think most of the business had to, to one way or another uh, some kind of impact. So it's important to, to challenge that standard way of thinking that you're accustomed to and also trying to think outside of the box. Mm -hmm. I think that's how I feel about the process of questioning. When I, um, from our previous conversation and how I've been relating to you, um, my observation would be that you're fairly good at, from an observer point of view, looking into the situation and then see from a critical point of view what's going on. Um, so have you taken some time over, particularly over 2020 to do that? Um, yes and, and no. Uh, I think from a time perspective, yes, I, I, I really tried to take as much time as I could to, to think about the situation and, and, and how things were developing and evolving. Uh, but I personally do that really well in connection with people. Uh, okay. So by having conversations or by being around people at the office, I, I get that energy and I'm able to understand how situation is and how people are and what is affecting people, what is making people sad, what is making people happy. But that possibility of interaction has been taken away from us eh, last year. So uh, so I did take time to think about this myself, uh, but the tools that I used to use, or they were very accustomed in the past, that they were no longer a possibility. Mm. So that made the situation a little bit more difficult. So um, instead of actually uh, looking at people around you and trying to make conclusions and understand uh, the situation. Uh, I, I had to do that myself, looking at the, the world as a whole, right? And mm -hmm. uh, I think that's, uh, it was a very interesting year because there were a lot of different new dimensions and perspectives mm -hmm. that I got in, in, in contact with. Uh, so, yeah. 
that's uh, that's how I see it. So, so the the human interaction is is very important for you, as I understand it. Yeah, we are in consulting, right? And yes. consulting, at the end of the day, it's all about people. Mm -hmm. So, um, <clears throat> our type of consulting is focused on technology as one of the pillars. It's also focused into workflows, as you say, and how actually to make business operate better mm -hmm. and more efficiently. But at the end of the day, it's people doing business with people, right? So. Um, uh, once I heard from a, a previous colleague of mine that uh, the most valuable asset of a consulting organization is people, and I actually truly believe uh, on that. I believe that uh, people play a key part in, in our uh, business, and they continue to do so. So, um, and um, although technology today helps and provides everything for you to be able to be successful mm -hmm. uh, without being, let's say, face to face with each other. Um, uh, yeah, I, I do think though that there are the basic human elements that are still require you to be around people to be successful with people. If you understand what I mean, yes, right? yes, yeah. yes, yeah. And and I think it's very important. I mean, I'm myself also very much of a people person, but I often wonder if you think about the topic of critical thinking and facts versus emotions. Um, to what extent do you think that um, emotions of people might or might not get in the way of critical thinking? I think they get absolutely in the way, in the uh, way. Okay. It, depending on circumstances around them, right? So uh, if I come back also to the topics we were just discussing, um, nowadays it's very easy to make emotional conclusions yes. out of the actual facts. Huh? Mm -hmm. So. Um, in the past, I think it's a human feature. Uh, you might have thoughts about some specific situation and thoughts cause emotions. And, and then at a certain point, you're going to validate if those emotions are true or not. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes you look for subtle hints or sometimes yes. you look for mm -hmm. specific facts. And when you find those, then you come to the conclusion that indeed those emotions are correct or not, right? Um, but again, an important element in, in making sure that these emotions are correct or not is be able to actually be with people and understand what the situation mm. is about. So, are, sorry, to, I don't want to interrupt you, but I want to understand it correctly. Is it that you say that you, in the past, you were able to rationalize or making sure that you understood the commo emotions yeah. correctly and that you did that also in a face-to-face -face situation yeah. not only or... me but people in, in general okay. right and uh, I can give an example for instance um, uh, you could have a feeling so you could be doing a great job right? mm -hmm. it's your day-to-day -day work or you could be doing actually an outstanding job above what you've done in the past but due to the fact that the tools or the elements that you had in the past by get, getting appreciation and getting uh, you know recognized by what you're doing are maybe a little bit more complicated nowadays mm -hmm. because people are in meetings, online meetings yes. all the time. Uh, you know, uh, I think in the past uh, I used to have a, a few meetings uh, every day, but now it's basically the whole day you were on calls, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't have the chance anymore to uh, uh, to praise a colleague or to actually hear a colleague praising you for mm -hmm. good work that you did, even though you're doing an excellent job. So emotions actually might get into conflict with the facts. Now, the facts are you okay. are doing a great job, but the emotions make you feel like you're not because you don't see that instant reward or that instant uh, okay. communication. So I, I could look at this from a perspective of a colleague, yeah, a mm -hmm. person, but also sometimes from a client or from actually anybody in the business environment, you know? So uh, even though, as I said, the tools are there, uh, uh, to the technological products are there to enable you to do that, I think uh, the human elements changed a lot. And mm -hmm. uh, I think that's the, that's the challenge. So I, I don't look at this just from a perspective of me uh, as a leader towards the colleagues, but actually see that also from colleagues to colleagues and from customers to customers and actually society as a whole. Uh, and also in my family, if I talk to people, I see similar challenges uh, everywhere nowadays. So that's why I think the, the, the process of critical thinking, uh, which is the topic of our conversation today, is very important because critical thinking and emotions, sometimes they really collide, right? And uh, uh, let's say, trying to put emotions a little bit aside so to realize and rationalize, is this really the way things are or is this correct or is this wrong? It's, it's mostly important today, uh, I think, than it was in the past. What, what you see a lot these days also is a lot of polarization, like opposing 
views um, and, and criti critical, not only thinking, but also critical comments. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm wondering how you look upon that. Like, um, to ask it more specifically for you, critical thinking at a time when there's a lot of polarization, mm -hmm. how do you make sure that you continue to exercise your critical thinking without polarizing? Um, that's tough. I think how, I don't know. There is no answer for that yet. Because I think we, we as a society, we're still learning. Yes. Uh, because we are in a new era, mm -hmm. which we hope to be a temporary era, but we are in a new moment in our, uh, uh, in, in our lives where we don't operate as we used to operate in the past. So I think how to critically think without, let's say, being in one extreme of the spectrum and the other, uh, uh, it, it's it's very challenging because in, in this specific context, I think emotions always get in the way. Yeah? I, I, I personally believe that emotions are actually what are dictating you from being on the left or on the right part of the equation. And uh, as I said a few minutes ago, I think emotions today are very difficult to manage uh, in combination with critical thinking because, you know, things that we used in the past to manage these emotions are a challenge today. So um, I think the, the the one thing that I I always advise, and I, I do that for myself also before coming to any conclusions, is really to challenge that thoughts uh, or the thread mm -hmm. of thoughts uh, multiple times, asking the five why principle. Yes, uh, yes. Why is this happening and, yeah. and, and why and why until you actually get to a final thought or conclusion about the topic uh, and, and and that makes it more factual rather than emotional yes so um yeah i i think that that helps yeah. and so would you say then that it's even more important now to continue to check the facts from 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 what you understand absolutely or? yeah okay uh, and although, some, as I said, sometimes finding or realizing the facts are a little bit more challenging today than they were in the past, it's yeah. still important that you always try to look at the facts to, to understand yeah. uh, what is going on, right? And sometimes the facts are not there, mm -hmm. uh, but then I think you need to chase those facts mm -hmm. to, so, to bring them up to the surface in order to be able to make uh, conscious decisions, mm -hmm. right? And I think a great tool for that is just simple, basic communication. Yes. And so, so you have um, facts and you have the emotions and you have the um, importance of checking the facts, which is a bit more difficult these days because of often things online. Mm -hmm. um, and the emotions, how would you say that we could control those emotions? Or um, that, That's, it's, it's person per person, right? Emotions mm -hmm. is something part of our human nature. Uh, and I think there's people that deal with emotions very easily. There's people that have more difficulties with emotions. Some people have uh, difficulties with having emotions managed on a personal setting, mm -hmm. others in a professional setting. So um, it's it's actually, it, it's very different between individual to individual, right? But I think here, the, the key question is to make sure that uh, you can't really sometimes manage emotions and how you feel because that's very human but uh, something that can influence your emotions is basically the facts that you either have in front of you or that you have to find yes uh, and uh, actually when you're feeling down uh, when you're feeling up when you feel uh, happy or when you feel unappreciated or whatever kind of feelings or thoughts you might be having it's always good to think uh, along the lines of okay is this feeling based on something that I have experienced, uh, or is this feeling based on something that I see happening uh, around me or something that somebody said? Uh, uh, and if yes, okay, let's process those facts in order to, uh, let's say, corroborate the feeling that I'm feeling, or um, I'm actually feeling like that because I don't understand what's going on, so let's try to explain uh, uh, what is happening for me to be able to understand how to feel. See, that's a little bit how I see it. So <laughs> I think I'm a little bit lost trying to understand. So you, um, so you say you want to understand the emotions in a factual way, or you you analyze them, or yeah, I, I personally yes. do, right? Yes. And I know that this is something very particular to me. I have already been told yeah. that a few times. Uh, I think it's part of my personality. It's also. I think it's very interesting because because. Because you you try to 
capture the emotions and then analyze them. So so it's it's almost like a critical an, uh, analysis yeah. of emotions. Self-reflection, right? yeah. Self-reflection, yeah. yeah. But I know that this is particular to me. I've, I've been told already a few times by a couple of different people that's something very particular from, from, from myself as a person. And I know that... Uh, 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 r rationalization and emotion sometimes they don't go into the same sentence together mm -hmm. uh, and uh, but this is how I feel that I can deal uh, with it right? yes and um, especially in the role of a leader also I think rationalize is really important uh, you mm -hmm. need to understand uh, uh, what you were doing and what you're deciding and which direction you need to go mm -hmm. so emotions they sometimes they can influence uh, something here something there I think that's part of human nature mm -hmm. but being rational and factual is actually uh, uh, very important in, in a role like that so for me I actually try to blend it all in together right mm -hmm. so uh, for me personally uh, whatever feeling I might be having I might try to rationalize and understand why why uh, yes and sometimes i can sometimes i can't yeah uh, and uh, yeah you just have to deal with it That's, uh, so what do you do when you can't then you learn how to live with that right okay. and then you, you 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 try to understand what impact of that it will have in your in your life mm -hmm. uh, if it's positive or if it's negative and then you have to manage and mitigate that mm -hmm. um and uh Every situation is different. Every feeling is different, uh, you, you know. So uh, I, I don't think there is a golden answer uh, for this particular uh, mm. question. Yeah. Yes. So you try to analyze and understand the emotions from an analytical point of view. If you can't, then you just live with it and you see how you approach it the next time. And in terms of um, mitigating that towards the people that you lead, is, uh, is there is there a way or a possibility to mitigate that? Um, how would you see that? I think to a certain extent, yes, right? Uh, so um, I think there's an important uh, a, a rule in, 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 in leadership, which is rule by example, right? So yes. sometimes if you are feeling down or if you're feeling up, it's always important to give confidence to people working with you, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so in, in moments that you're feeling challenged uh, emotionally, mm -hmm. uh, uh, let's say from an, on a negative connotation, you're feeling down or you're feeling uh, 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 not in your best uh, suit, let's say, then it's important that you try to mitigate the way you express that to your colleagues uh, and to turn that into a positive setting rather than negative, right? Mm -hmm. And that's challenging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say that's part of the job. Uh, you, we have we have to do that. We have to lead by lead by example. So. That's a little bit the complication and the difficulty, uh, and, and that's something that I think humans cannot master. That's something that you live and learn until your last day, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's, it's something in a constant uh, and consistent uh, 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 change and, and, and adaptation. Mm -hmm. It's the eternal student. Yeah, it's the eternal student indeed, I, yeah. And yes. I, I haven't met anybody that masters that 100% uh, still, you know, yeah. so you can see people that are really good at it. Yeah. Right? But sometimes you can always see something slip here and there. You can yeah. see that they are not in their best day. Yeah. So uh, it's very important that you don't let negativity uh, or uh, a, uh, a heavy moment, uh, uh, professionally or personally, uh, or, or in your personal life, uh, let's say, exhale to the rest of your colleagues, to the organization, to your right. clients. And so, uh, uh, and I think that's also a strength of a consultant, mm -hmm. right? I, I think it, it's a consultant uh, in, in its nature. He's there to advise. He's mm -hmm. there to guide people to to uh, you know to share knowledge, uh, and you're successful at that when you have positivity around you, right? Mm -hmm. When you're enthusiastic, when you are able to bring the the right positive message at the right time. So, um, in in in, the, I, I always tell people that in the mindset of a consultant, sometimes you need to have two different faces. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, who you are as a person is very important for who you are as a consultant, but if you're feeling down, you have to park that a little bit and, and be enthusiastic to your customer because that's when you succeed, right? And one sometimes can influence the way you feel on the other side of the of the fence. So you hold part for yourself and you only give give out or give to the people the parts that are okay to give because it won't impact yeah. them with your possible doubts or difficult feelings yeah, exactly that, that and i think that's that's how you mitigate uh, mm -hmm. those those feelings that sometimes you can't process and they're they are still there yeah. Yeah. yeah and i think this is something that will always happen to everybody i think it's natural yeah. yes yes and i 
I'm also wondering if you, I know from um, previous conversations that you're also a cook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not to change the subject, but to go on a slightly different path. Um, in a, in a cooking, I would assume that you mix different ingredients. Mm -hmm. And um, when, I was, when I was looking at your website last night as well, I was reflecting on the flow and in, in the flow in the business or as a consultant, which you also explain from holding certain parts. And I see it a lot in, in how you explain things. Mm -hmm. And I made the analogy with the cooking as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so if you think about flow of information, cooking, different mm -hmm. ingredients, um, how would you link that or not to critical thinking? Um, <clears throat> that's a good question. I, I think maybe let's reflect a bit on why actually I cook. Uh, apart mm -hmm. from the fact that I like oh, food yeah, and I like cooking, yes, I think it's also because uh, it, it relaxes me. Mm -hmm. It makes me calm, mm -hmm. um, and it's also uh, uh, consulting that also makes me calm and makes me relaxed. I know are two okay. settings that I actually feel quite uh, similar. And what they do both have in common is, you know, uh, I, I see both as, as an engine where you feed specific information and then in the end there is an outcome, right? Okay. When you're cooking, you're using different ingredients, in the end you have an outcome. And then you have that instant satisfaction and realization of a product that you have produced, mm -hmm. right? Um, so if I think about, if I reflect between cooking and consulting, for example, I think one of the elements that I think about often is what is the outcome that I expect from two, these two different things. So for example, if I look at consulting, I think of what a client needs at a specific moment in time, right? So then I'm going to target that specific result. And a cooking is the same. Huh? So it might be a cold day outside and you want to eat some soup, or it might be uh, 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 some friends coming over and you want a barbecue or something like that. So that critical thinking helps me and realize what is the result that I'm trying to target uh, and uh, what is the process uh, from the moment that I make the decision until that moment in time that I have to follow to make that happen, mm -hmm. right? So, so that's how I maybe connect this to critical thinking. But if I also look at the, uh, cooking as, as a hobby, for me, it's just a way to really completely relax uh, and disconnect from, uh, from challenges of the day-to-day -day life. <laughs> yeah. what, what I find interesting is that um, you talk about the critical thinking as an end result and a process to get there. So it's, like, it's almost like a, a linear path. And at the same time, you say it helps me relax. So just by the movement also of your hands, uh, yeah. it's like the flow is going to the result yeah. and it's also the flow and difference. Yeah. So it it's, looks like multidimensional. Yeah, I, I think the critical thinking is in the multidimensional. There are different shades. It's all the time here and there. Yeah. So, for, for example, if you're cooking uh, something, uh, mm -hmm. And then you only question yourself what you want to cook in the five last minutes of mm -hmm. your cooking. You can't change a soup to a uh, right. pizza or something right. like that, right? So <laughs> you're always challenging yourself throughout the whole process, from yeah. the beginning, during the process, yeah. and then at the end, consulting is the same, right? Yeah. So you are questioning and challenging yourself uh, throughout the process until you get the final result. Um, and... Uh, why do I find it relaxing? That I, I don't know. That's a good question. I um, I think it's because when you are comfortable with the elements mm -hmm. uh, on that process, and w when you feel like you, it's something that it's your setting mm -hmm. that you to like to do, that you like to be there, mm -hmm. and uh, that you 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 have had already good experiences and so on. So that process is not a process of challenge anymore. That's a process of uh, let's say, uh, that makes you feel good, you know? Mm -hmm. So for me, that realization of something that happens in the end and you see a result by being something that you cooked or by being actually delivering a great solution to a client, uh, uh, I think that that's what it brings me that satisfaction, you mm -hmm. know? And if the whole process up until you get there is a process of creativity, it's a process of yeah. challenge, it's a process that you can input your experience and your knowledge in order to get to the result, that's also satisfactory, mm -hmm. you know? Um, 
Would I also feel that uh, calmness or that satisfaction on a process that I'm not very familiar with mm -hmm. or on, on something that I have to do that it's not my strong suit? Uh, for example, if I would put on a setting to work with uh, something completely different than mm -hmm. I do, uh, I would also enjoy the process, but probably it wouldn't make me calm. Uh, it would be, I would be a little bit more stressed because I would have to learn a variety of different things that at the time were not uh, clear to me. So... Uh, if you don't know the specific elements? Yeah, for or, example, uh, yeah. You know, uh, if I would have to work on uh, whatever, on, on as a lawyer, for instance, or mm, on okay. trading or okay. on things that are not uh, my main area of expertise, yeah. you know, so there would be a lot of learning that I have to mm -hmm. do throughout the way. Uh, uh, I will be in a, uh, let's say, alien environment, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and that would probably not be so calm as it is on mm -hmm. environments that I like and I'm involved for too many years. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've been consulting already for uh, nearly 20 years, so for me that's already a little bit more mm -hmm. of a comfort zone to, to a certain extent. Well, comfort zone is not the right word because in consulting there is no comfort zone, huh? but it's just a, an environment that I'm very familiar uh, yes. with. It's the ability that you have, as I observe it, from looking also at these things from different angles. Mm -hmm. and, I, and personally, I believe that that's a very important part of critical thinking because you look at it from, you. the way I understand it is you know the elements, you're a little bit less comfortable if your skill set in that particular setting is not as developed. Mm -hmm. And so then there's a learning curve as well, so mm -hmm. you might feel a little bit less calm, but your ability to look at the different elements from different points of view mm -hmm. Um, to come to a result and to like you make the nice movement like that yeah. to come to a, to a, a flow yeah. a flow in fact I, I had to do that because I uh, years ago in my in my career I came to the conclusion that I was looking at things in a very narrow perspective okay right so um, uh, I think w w when we started our conversation I talked about coming from a technical approach uh, in my career and then I had to expand to other areas I think at that part I was really looking at something technical, which is good. There's no problem with that. And it's, uh, I had a lot of fun and a mm -hmm. lot of fulfillment with that. But where my ambition wanted to go, I realized that I had to start questioning some of those elements. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, at that moment, my uh, process of questioning everything happened and became a natural part of the process. Mm -hmm. right? So today, it's uh, I think everything that happens, I always question myself, uh, question the situation before I actually try to get to a conclusion. Which is, in many ways, the essence of critical thinking, I think. Yeah. Is it always like that? I would say not really, because we're mm -hmm. human. And yes. uh, I think sometimes emotions overtake uh, 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 reason. Uh, mm -hmm. That's natural of who we are as, as people. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think always the thought is to try to question and bring it the, bring into perspective uh, what you're going through, what you're feeling, to see if it makes sense and if this is the correct way or not. Mm -hmm. So in the, in the setting in which we are now, where we're also literally a bit cut off from different countries, different cultures, different nationalities, um, because of our borders, and you being from Brazil, um, in what way does that affect you? Um, today, I'm from a very international family, actually. So yeah. I'm from Brazil. My wife is from Russia. We live okay. in Belgium. Okay. Um, uh, you know, uh, been working with people from around the world. Uh, my, part of my family is in Brazil. Part of my family is in Russia. Um, it, the fact that we can't really travel mm -hmm. uh, or be with people from from outside, there's actually. Um, I think it's, it can compare that with not being able to see people around Belgium, uh, mm -hmm. around where we are now. I think that that's actually to a certain extent worse for me mm -hmm. because uh, I've been outside of Brazil for so many years mm -hmm. now that uh, actually Belgium is my home and mm -hmm. I have my friends and I have you know everybody around me here and not being able to spend time uh, with them uh, often as I used to by being colleagues or friends or whoever that is. I think that's a little bit more complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, the personal challenge I have without being able to, you know, travel abroad or to, to bring family over is that I have a very young son. He's mm -hmm. uh, about uh, 13, 14 months. And my mom, for example, could not see him yet. Yes. Uh, she didn't have the chance yet because she cannot come over and mm -hmm. I cannot go there. So um, that's it. But I think in actually in today, society, is, uh, speaking for, for my family personally, mm -hmm. the biggest challenge is not being able to see people around your circle. 
you know the fact that you see time fly Mm -hmm. you know uh, uh, today is monday Mm -hmm. uh, uh, tomorrow is sunday already Mm -hmm. and you didn't Mm -hmm. see fast by like this you don't leave your homes to do anything you work from home you wake up at home you go to sleep at home you 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 don't go out so i think that's actually the challenge Mm -hmm. so um um and and i hope that this doesn't stay like this for too long right it's an international world today it's uh everybody's used to travel everybody's used to see people from around the world and and we are now on pause mode yes. right and yeah. that's a little bit upsetting mm-hmm. uh, uh, to say to the least so yeah. <laughs> and so the ability for critical thinking to look at things from different angles would you say then that that's even more difficult because we're not surrounded uh, I think in this particular question, it's complicated because yeah. it's something new. So exactly. w- when you're so questioning something, normally you try to reflect on past experiences, right? Exactly. So you think, okay, maybe something like this happened a few years ago. How can I correlate that to what is happening now? But today, what's going on is just uh, for our generation, something completely new. We didn't mm-hmm. go through that. So um, you can think about this, but sometimes you don't really get answers, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, for example, if you have a colleague feeling down, uh, because uh, he's not able to see his colleagues at work, mm-hmm. and that's something very important to him. Uh, uh, what solutions can you mm-hmm. put in place? You know, and you think, okay, what would have we done in a, in a different setting? So, uh, we don't know because this is new. Uh, we have to, to discover that. So I think that's where the challenge is. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, in the current setting today, the critical thinking is actually a greenfield critical yes. thinking. Mm-hmm. While if you reflect on other topics, you always have something to compare with. I I really love that final note because it's almost like we need to look at critical thinking from a critical point of view to, it's like a greenfield, to rethink what does critical thinking today and going forward really needs. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's not black or white. I think that there are a lot of elements going on today that you can always analyze and think and so on. But there are elements that are really just uh, at this point, it's... It's just complicated to, to, to get an answer to. Yes. So in a way, it's a challenging uh, period of our lives. But on the other hand, I think the amount of knowledge that we have uh, captured uh, uh, throughout society as a whole uh, in, in this last uh, 12 months, it's enormous. Uh, and, and I also speak for myself. I, I had a difficult year last year, I, I think as everybody else did. But I think... I feel much much more prepared uh, mm-hmm. to the future. And I think that um, in the next years to come, other challenges will pop up, uh, maybe similar, maybe different, we don't know. But I feel that what we have lived in these 12 months have prepared us to, to, something, uh, to something else that might uh, uh, come upon us uh, in the near or in the long future. So I think uh, as a whole, uh, uh, we have uh, gotten a lot of knowledge and that's good. Thank you so much for having this interview around critical thinking. I really believe um, I learned a lot from listening to you. So It was a pleasure. Thank you Thank for you. inviting me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So in the interview, we talked about critical thinking and the importance of critical thinking as a leader. Um, It's one of the key components of our 3D leadership screening that we have with CLIC. And what's really interesting is that on critical thinking, many leaders actually score relatively low. Um, So um, the first time even when I did it, I also scored low on it. And if you think about critical thinking, it's, for example, the ability to really critically look at facts, sources of information, where they come from, um, who checks what. For example, in Corona times, in the very beginning, there was on WhatsApp a message that went around about how you could check that you had Corona. And it was a message, some of you may remember this, where uh, you had to hold your breath for 10 times and then do a few checks. And I was already completely buying into this, that information, where my colleague said, well, Annelies, maybe you should check the information of the World Health Organization because I think this is fake news. So fake news, the things, the, the checking your sources of information, critically thinking where the information comes from, separating facts from emotions, all very important um, tributes of 
leadership, particularly today. Now, in the interview, you may have noticed that I actually checked quite often um, the difference between emotions and facts and the relationship between emotions and facts. Because when you get into emotions and you emotionally get into a subject, you may lose your ability to critically think and analyze information. And so a lot of the conversation was precisely about that to really be able to step out of a situation and look at it from a critical point of view. So there, for critical thinking, I also believe it's very important that you um, truly listen to what other people say. Also there, you may have noticed, which is a coaching technique that we use a lot, listening can happen at very many different levels. You listen not just with your own thought process in your mind. And so you listening, I always say, is more than waiting to respond. You listen to what the person really says. And if you critically think, you, you take a little bit of distance to really understand what the person says. And listening is also on many different levels. You, um, you may have noticed as well that at a certain point in time, I was mirroring Raphael's movements. So you, uh, he talked at a certain point in time, you know, when you um, critically think or you have a process, you look at the end result and then the process to get there. And then he said, and I feel more relaxed in this way. And then we talked about, you know, the flow and going around. And so listening is also tuning into the body language of a person. So you listen at many different levels. So Critically thinking, again, a very, very important topic. And when I um, look at that from a leadership point of view, a 3D leadership point of view, as we call it in CLIC, um, which is a screening that we do to measure who you are as a person, how you interact with your team, and how you interact with a larger uh, organization around you, critical, critical thinking is, is really key there. One or two particular tips for you as a leader to um, practice your critical thinking. The first one is we say like you look at things from a, you broaden your peripheric sight. Now, what do I mean by that? You can actually practice it. You can put your hands there and, and look like that. So you, you practice your vision from a broader perspective, because if you critically think, you don't focus on something, like one thing at a time, but you also look at different perspectives. So you literally can practice it by wiggling your fingers like that and practicing your peripheral view, which means that you can look critically from different angles. Critical thinking means that you start looking at things from different angles, from here, from there, from there, because you put yourself in the place of another person, different persons. You may have noticed that during the conversation with Raphael, I also talked about um, his, his um, country of origin, Brazil, because to have the different perspective from different angles across borders. And the other um, concrete tip that I would like to give you is to put yourself more in the observer status. What does that mean? You look from the outside to a situation. Because when you are too much into your own way of thinking or into the other person's uh, way of thinking, you're too focused on something. You're too deep into something. So what we say um, as a coach is you go into the, the position of what we call the fly on the wall or the fly uh, you know, outside of the conversation who looks at the conversation from an external point of view, so the observer status. And so if you practice your uh, peripheral view more to look at things from different perspectives, and you practice going and looking at the situation from outside in, then you will um, develop your critical thinking, which again, I think is very essential, particularly at the times in which we live today. In this interview on the ability of critical thinking as a leader, I was interviewing Rafael Rodriguez, but at the same time, I was attempting to use a coaching way of um, asking the questions. Now, 
I want to specifically mention this distinction because as a leader, it's very important to know what role you play. So you may have noticed that, that sometimes I ask more closed questions or some more open questions. When I ask more closed questions, which are questions that you answer with a yes or a no, it was also often as an interviewer um, because I wanted to get an answer to the question that I asked. Whereas as a coach, you go completely in the flow of the person who you coach and you, you let the conversation lead its own life of course, within a certain context and process, but it's much more about the person. Whereas as, a, as an interviewer, you sometimes um, also have your agenda in mind because you're talking about critical thinking. And I, I wanted to mention this distinction because um, sometimes there's a question, you know, a coaching leader, what does it mean? Well, you cannot be a hierarchical person and say, this is what you need to do. This is your performance. This is where you need to go. And at the same time, be a complete coach as we external coaches are. Because as a coach, you have the agenda of the person and you go with the flow of the person. As a leader, it's your job as well to sometimes make decisions and uh, people also need to perform. So, there's a very important distinction, and I noticed it myself while doing this interview, the difference between an interviewer and a coach, and wanted to share this insight with you. Thank you for listening to the Cues of Click. We hope that we have inspired you and that you have learned things that you can use in your daily life. Please spread the word, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on social media.